Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm going to be talking about a topic which I've seen come up a lot and that is structural engineers versus architects. Now the reason I say that this topic comes up quite a lot is because I always feel that there's a lot of friction between engineers and architects and I don't really know why. Um, I've been seeing on Reddit in the structural engineers um, subreddit that you always see some people saying oh bloody hell the, you know, the architect's done this, one idiot, or you know, even around the office you hear that oh, stupid architect has done this and this, why has he done that, the architect doesn't know anything, god I hate working with this architect, or something along those lines, you know, things where it doesn't sound great. Now I want to kind of explore why this happens and why it's a bad thing to have this kind of friction between essentially it's your teammate. In a project, You'll be working with architects, mechanical, electrical engineers, landscape architects, QSs, all sorts of people. And essentially you are a team in this, working together. You can be working for different companies, but you are the design team. And what kind of team can perform well if no one gets along, or if there's a lot of friction between your team members? Take the analogy of, you know, a football team. A good football team will have all the players working well together, understanding each other's strengths and weaknesses. So that translates exactly to a project you know, or a design team in the construction industry. Everyone has their strengths and weaknesses. I obviously know my structure engineering, but there's not a lot of the architectural stuff which I know. I know bits of it, but I'm obviously gonna be reliant heavily on the architect to sort of take that lead on because obviously that's his job. Likewise for mechanical and electrical services, they're the experts, they're you know, the consultants for that. So as a team, we are relying on them to do their job and feed into our, our work as well, because there's a lot of things like you know, mechanical services which will need to go through structural elements. So to be honest, in my opinion, if you've got friction between your teammates, there's something going terribly, terribly wrong. You want to eliminate that as much as possible and to really try and work well with your other teammates, the architects, engineers, QSs, landscape architects, anyone in your design team, your clients, you want to work well with them because the best projects which go run well are the ones where the design team has worked really, really well together. That's in my experience. And I can say with 99% of certainty that most projects which run well have that kind of bond within their design team even if you work for different companies. The construction industry is a really small world and if you're working on a project today a year down the line you might be working with the same architect, same electrical, same mechanical engineer one year down the line. You just never know. It's a really small field and you'll likely throughout your career bump into the same people over and over again. It's also great for business as well, not just you know the project itself, but for future business, you have to remember that engineering is a business and if you don't work well with your clients, if you don't work well with other architects, other consultants, you're not going to get more work coming through the door and eventually you'll run out of business. A lot of new business or a lot of new projects will come through referrals. So if you work well, say, with an architect on one project, maybe a year down the line, the architect might get an inquiry and the client might be asking do you know any good structural engineers that you could recommend? If that architect has worked really well with you, they might say hey I know this guy from X company, let's try them, see if they're busy, see what kind of fee they're going to give, see if they're interested. And that's another really good way to get through the door. If you don't work well with people or say you don't work well with that architect, they're never going to recommend you and you're never going to get those kind of referrals. So always try to think of the wider picture, the bigger picture. Understand that working on a team is not just specifically for that project, but it's for future projects and future development. You'll find that if you work well in a team with other people, you'll enjoy your work a hell of a lot more. And if you enjoy the work, you're more likely to do a better job. So I'm, I'm going to share a quick little story about a project which I did maybe when I was in my kind of second to third year of working um, as an engineer. And it's basically a school project. And I remember going to my first design team meeting of this project with a senior engineer and we both went there and it was at planning stage. 
and we had the contractor on board already at early stage which I highly recommend because they can feed in some really really useful information. The architect was obviously there and I think the mechanical and electrical engineers were also there. You know, early stage meeting, getting ideas across. And I remember thinking that this architect who was leading the planning design was a fucking arsehole. Like he honestly was a massive prick. <laughs> and um, we had their scheme and we basically said, you know, the way that you've laid out your windows on your, you know, your window elevation is really awkward. Basically the windows were dotted all over the place and they weren't aligned, which basically means that your columns need to be staggered along the elevation, which just means that it's an inefficient structural design. You know, as engineers, we don't really like it. And that's fine. Like you can have staggered columns. It does affect where you can put your bracing, but we can work around this. And the thing which really, like kind of really pissed me off about this architect was we kind of said, is there any way that you can move some of these windows so that we can make these columns go all the way up so they're not staggered, so that we can put some more bracing in to make sure that the building is stable. And the architect was just really, really unhelpful. <laughs> and he was just like, no, basically just straight out just said, no, I'm not changing my windows. You've got to deal with it. And from that point on, I was like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? You know, we should be working as a team, you know, making compromises where possible because not only is a structure, you know, having a inefficient structure means that there's more cost in the structure because you're gonna have to put transfer beams in and it's just, it's just not good detailing. So by having this inefficiency, it's costing the project more, but the architect was just, you know, he was just like, I'm happy with my design, you have to deal with me and you're not basically not gonna compromise, he's not gonna budge. So basically told us to fuck off and sort it out for ourselves. And uh, so, well, you know, fair enough, if the architect's not gonna change it, then we've got an inefficient structure. And basically this architect is a planning architect. So he only does schemes up to planning stage and once it's gone through planning it gets passed on to another architect in their firm and this project actually turns out to be one of my most successful projects ever um, I had so few RFIs so few problems on it and it was because the architect who eventually took over it you know, post planning was really good and we worked really, really well as a team. Like we got to know each other really well. We worked really well with the contractors. Um, we did a lot of clash detection on our Revit models. You know, worked well with the mechanical electrical engineers. So we like collaborated really, really well during the tender design and then the detail design. And then as soon as it went through to construction, there was like hardly anything which went wrong. I rarely had to go to site and I didn't really have to answer many RFIs at all it went so smoothly and that to me was down to how well we worked together during the sort of detailed design stages and I think that makes a really really huge difference in the enjoyment of the project like I really enjoyed my time working with the architect the engineers the landscape architect when they ask me a question I'm more than happy to spend extra time working through the stuff with them if I didn't get along with them, I'd be like, you know, every time they called me, I'd be like, oh God, I've got to, you know, speak to this guy, he's a bit of an arsehole, a bit of a prick, you know, I don't want, you know, you don't really want to speak to him, don't really want to help him out. But on the flip side, if you work really well with people, you can ask them questions as well, and they're going to be likely to help you, you know, as much as you'd help them as well. So it goes both ways. And um, this might be a really stupid video to make, or it might just be common sense, but honestly, the amount of times I've seen like engineers versus other engineers or versus architects, it's not versus, it's engineers and architect. You're not battling each other. You're working together to achieve a common goal. Anyway, I kind of want to wrap this video up. Hopefully this gives you a bit of insight and to hopefully Make sure that you're not stuck in that mindset of thinking it's engineers versus architects or engineers versus someone else or the contractor. It's not versus, you know, work together. You'll have a much better time on your project. 
you know, you're going to enjoy it a lot more. It's going to go so much better, which is fundamentally what you what you want. You're spending 40 hours a week doing this job. You have to enjoy it. And I think an easy way to get enjoyment is to work well with other people. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.